Uh, good afternoon students. We'll start with the today's lecture and uh, we'll start with unit 2. In unit 2 that is chapter 3 time response of feedback control systems, right? Okay, what all the things we are going to study in this we'll see, right? Okay, syllabus, standard test signals. I'll tell you what are this. Just I will read out the topics what we are going to study and I'll make you understand each and every topic in detail, right? In further classes. Okay, standard test signals. Then unit step response of first order system and unit step response of second order system. FOS means first order system. SOS second order system. Then time response specifications with respect to second order system. Steady state errors and error constants. Types of control systems. Then dominant poles of transfer functions. These are all the topics that we are going to study. Right? We will cover in detail. Then in today's lecture, we will be starting with this chapter that is time response of feedback control systems. In the first chapter we have studied, there are two, broadly we can classify the control systems into two types, open loop control system and closed loop control system. And there is other name for closed loop control system, also called as feedback control system or automatic control system, right? You know it. So we will be studying with respect to feedback control systems or closed loop control systems, not the open loop control systems. So, right. And the chapter name itself is telling time response of feedback controls means there should be frequency response also, right? Okay, in the later chapters, we'll see the frequency response of the closed loop control systems or feedback control systems, right? So in this unit two, we'll see the time response of feedback control systems or the closed loop control systems, right? Okay, today we'll see the brief introduction of about this chapter, then the standard test signals, then unit step response of first order systems. We'll cover one by one. Let's coming to the brief introduction part. Then what is time response of the system, right? First, the output of the closed loop system as a function of time, right? Yes, we will obtain the output after certain amount of time after applying the input, right? So the output of the closed loop system, if it is a function of time, then I will call it as time response of the system. Yes, what are all the things that are involved in time response analysis, right? So system stability, we are going to study then the accuracy of the system, then evaluation of the system. These are all things we are going to study in the time response analysis of the system. Okay, to make you understand, I will take one example. Let me take the example of ammeter, which is used to measure the current of 5 amps. Okay, let me choose the analog ammeter, not the digital one, analog ammeter. Okay, let me assume that this is my analog ammeter, right? I am drawing it like this, see here, right? Okay, there is a calibration scale is there, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is in amps, right? Okay, 0 amps, 1 amp, 2 amps, and 6 amps, right? Okay, there is a pointer. Okay, let me show the pointer here. Okay. Now, my, now I am using the ammeter to measure the current of 5 amps, right? Okay. Then with respect to time, okay, the pointer initially will be at 0. It will take some amount of time in order to reach this uh, digit 5, right? So in order to measure 5 amps, right? So it has to move through 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4 till 5, right? Okay, it takes some amount of time. After some amount of time only, then I will get the reading of the current, right? Okay, then fine. Then accuracy. Accuracy depends. It may measure 4.9, sorry, 4.9 amps or 5.1 amps. It depends, right? If it is exactly measures 5 amps, then the system is 100% accurate. If it measures 4.9 or 5.1, then it is having the tolerance of plus or minus 10%, something like that, right? So the system is not accurate, right? So if it measures exactly 5, then I will say that the system is accurate. Then after some amount of time, there should not be any deflection. The pointer should not be deflecting. It should stand at 5 amps firmly. Then I will say that system is stable, right? Okay. Then evaluation of the system, if everything, if system is stable, if system is accurate, then I will approve such kind of systems. Thus, we make use of time response analysis for the evaluation of this kind of system. This is one example what I have given, right? Then the time response of the system can be divided into two types, the tra transient response and steady state response. We will see it later, okay? Right now, we will understand what is steady state response and uh, transient response of the system. First, steady state response. The final state achieved by the out output, right? Here, for example, what is the final state achieved by the output? In the example of ammeter, yes, the pointer will move and it will stand at 5. That is the, yes, after attaining 5, it will stand still there only. It will not move, right? Till it will measure, after measuring 5 amps of current, it will be standing there. Means the final steady state is achieved. If it is still moving, means if the pointer is still moving, 0, 1, 2, it is not a uh, steady state because it is passing that state we call it as transient state means still the variations are there in order to before achieving the desired output desired output is it has to measure and stop come and stop at 5 amps 
but still it is moving from 0 1 2 3 these the output the variations of the output before achieving the steady state we call it as transient response of the system i hope you understood what is the steady state response and transient response right so there is a variation means the pointer is moving but still it has not come up to 5 amps the variations in the output before reaching the steady state we call it as transient response of the system second one i hope you got it right the same thing i have written here the output variations during the time it takes to achieve its final value or steady state we call it as transient response of the system okay as usual i told you the time response of a control system is usually divided into two parts the transient response and steady state response the transient response also called as dynamic response right and the total the time response of the system c of t is given by ct of t plus css of t it has two parts ct of t means this is a transient response we represent transient response by ct of t this small t indicates transient response right this one then css of t this ss indicates steady state response so the overall time response of the system is divided into two parts the transient response and the steady state response and through the example of ammeter i have make, made you people under to understand that what is steady state and what is transient state a tra transient response okay we'll continue with what is we'll in detail we'll try to understand what is transient response uh, the notation for transient response is ct of t yes already we know once again i will define it the output variations during the time it takes to achieve its final value we call it as transient response okay we will take the example in figure a this is figure a right then figure b is there okay before explaining these two figures okay let me take some system here there is a system right this is a system then i will apply input right you will let me take in laplace domain or uh, time domain only okay r of t then output is c of t if it is okay r of t and c of t after after applying the input after some amount of time i will get the output right that output should be it should be or it should be stable it should be accurate then only i will evaluate the system it should be stable it should be accurate right so whatever the output i am getting then i will judge whether the system is stable or accurate right after some amount of time okay let me assume this system this system may be first order system fos or second order system and what is the order of the system suppose i will look at the transfer function right for example g of s is equal to uh, 2 divided by s plus 2 for s plus 2 something like this so i will look at the highest power of s in the denominator of the transfer function if it is 1 then this is first order system this is example of first order system let me take another example so 4 divided by s square plus 2s plus 8 something like this then i will look at the denominator our characteristic equation i look at the denominator and i will check whether what is the highest power of s the highest power of s here it is 2 so i will call such type of system as second order system right how we decide the order of the system this already i have told you briefly right in the previous chapters right first order system and second order system okay let me assume that this is first order system let me assume the system is first order and i will apply input and i will be getting some output okay yes this is the output or response what i am getting in figure a this is the response of the first order system for unit step input the input what i am applying is unit step u of t the unit step input i will tell you why we are applying unit step only i can apply any kind of input but here unit step input i am applying right then i am getting some output that response here is plotted here right you can observe here x axis is time axis then y axis is response of the system c of t right c of t consists of two parts that is ct of t and css of t ct of t is transient response css of t is steady state response let me assume that as the time increases from zero okay time is increasing along x axis you can observe the variation the output is slowly rising exponentially right and the input for the system is unit step so this is the input just i will show you this is the unit step input this is the unit step input what i am applying for the system then i'll change the color and show you how the output varies as time elapses the output varies like this and it will attain the steady state right okay this is the output and this is the unit step input 
unit step input this red color line right this is the unit step input line and this is the response of the system right okay this has two parts one is till here ct of t this is the transient response from here the response is css of t steady state response right this is transient response and this is steady state response okay just we were defining transient response the variations in the output are the output variations during the time it takes to achieve its final value see here the system is rising and at some amount of time it will achieve the steady state means the output will be constant throughout it will be constant right so it has achieved the steady state before achieving the steady state this line whatever we have marked here right the variations of the output before achieving the steady state we call it as transient response ct of t that we have marked here from here to here is it fine that is clear then what is transient period or trans transient time from here to here the period right the variations in the output or the period we call it as transient time or transient period the definition is the time required to achieve the final value or steady state value the time required to achieve the steady state value or final value is called as transient period right then another way of looking at the transient response of the system we know that the response of the system time response it consists of two parts ct of t plus the steady state response css of t then how to define transient response right just another way of defining transient response is it is part of the time response yes it is part of the time response right the overall time response of the system is given by ct of, ct is equal to ct of t plus css of t. it is part of the time response right so just mathematically the transient response mathematically we can tell we can define here mathematically limit t tending to infinity ct of t equal to zero means the transient response is part of the time overall time response which vanishes at time t equal to infinity means you can observe here if the time is increasing this steady state is achieved at time t equal to infinity means whenever the steady state is achieved what will happen to transient it will die out so it is equal to zero limit t tending to infinity as the time approaches infinity the steady state is obtained by the system right if the output value will be constant the steady state is achieved by the system and transient dies out so ct of t the transient it is equal to zero because it vanishes at time t equal to infinity i hope you got it so mathematically we can express this transient response like that time t limit t tending to infinity ct of t equal to zero this is with respect to first order system then let me take the second order system right okay once again before taking second order system with respect to figure b i will want to discuss something here so i will change the color yes this is the actual output of the system what i am getting this one this blue color and here this is the desired output what i wanted to get desired output here you can see here the system if there is a difference between the actual output and the desired output then system is having steady state error ess we call it as steady state error if the if there is no difference if the difference is zero if there is a if the difference between the desired output and actual output is zero then there is no steady state error means i want to tell that the system has achieved 100% of the final state means it has achieved the final state but here if there is a difference like this you can see the arrow mark here from here to here right this distance this we call it as steady state error right the difference between the desired output and the actual output will give me the steady state error i hope you understood ess but it is a function of time ess of t so it is difference between the desired output and the actual output this is with respect to first order system next let me take this system let me assume the system is second order system means somewhat the transfer function is like this g of s is equal to 4 by s square plus 2 s plus something one example i have taken right okay this is the transfer function of the second order system it is mentioned here the and once again i am applying the input as unit step only right then output i will be getting the output is like this in the as shown in figure b this is time axis along x axis and this is y axis that is the response of the system c of t and you can observe here as the time elapses the output slowly increases the response of the system slowly increases and it will reach some peak value once again it decreases right there is a continuous attenuation right so this is damped oscillations damped oscillations means you can see 
the attenuations are decreasing and finally they will come down to zero. You can see the damped oscillations here and finally they will die out. So this is decaying exponential, decaying exponential, right? This decaying exponential, right? So this is the response of second order system. Okay. And the, what is the input? This is the input, unit step input I told. This is the unit step input, u of t. Then this is the response of the system, what I am getting here. Okay, I will change the color. This is the response of the system. Right? Yes, it will stop here. But this is the desired output. Desired output. And this is the actual output, what I am getting. Actual output. So already I have made people understood that what is steady state error, ESS of T. Right? The difference between the desired output and the actual output will give me the steady state error. Once again in the, here you can observe there are two parts. The rest time response of the system, CT of, C of T consists of CT of T plus CSS of T. Here just observe here, the transients, the system is achieving steady state, it remains constant here after this time period. Right? Okay, this from here to here, it is CT of T, CT of T, the transient response. Then afterwards of this is CSS of T, steady state response. Right? The response, the time response of the system consists of two parts, transient response as well as steady state response. And you can observe here, still the output is varying here. You can see here, there is a variation in the output before achieving the steady state or final state. Right? Once the steady state is achieved, the transient vanishes, means the transient response dies out at time t equal to infinity, means the steady state is obtained at the large amount of time, that is at time t equal to infinity. Right? Suppose if there is no error means it has to achieve uh, this actual output should be same as desired output. The difference should be means then only I will say that the steady state error is zero. Right? But here the difference is shown here. I hope you understood the steady state response as well as the transient response. Right? Okay. Then next what is stable system? Then okay steady state already I have made you understood but still we will take up. What is stable system? The systems in which the transient response dies out after some time, we call such systems as stable systems, right? Okay. Then which are not stable system, I will give one example. Let me observe here. This is x axis, the time axis and this is the response of the system C of t. If I take the system like this, uh, let me see here. Uh, this is the, let me assume that this is the unit step input and the variation is like this, for example. If I am getting this kind of response, see here, it is rising exponential. The oscillations will increase, but they will, the variations in the output will be there and the system will never attain the steady state. This is the steady state, right? Which has to attain here, but it is growing. So these type of systems we call it as unstable systems, unstable system or systems. The stable systems are those in which the transient response dies out. Here the transient is never going to die here, means the system is not going to attain the final state or steady state, right? The systems in which the steady state or final state is not at attained, we call such type of systems as unstable systems. The systems in which the transient response dies out, just like this here, in this case, right? So they will die out. This is the decaying exponential, right? So they die out at time t equal to infinity. We call such type of systems as stable systems in which the transient dies, transient dies out. The next steady state response of the system, already we know it and we call it as CSS of T. And overall C of T is given by C of T is equal to the time response of the system is divided into two parts, CT of T. Once again, I am repeating CSS of T. Then how to define? It is part of the time response. Yes, it is part of the time response, which remains after complete transient response vanishes from the system. Means whenever this vanishes, the system will attain the steady state, right? Okay from the system output. It is the final value achieved by the system output, right? Then it tells how far away the actual output is from the desired value, right? You can see here, this is, I already have told, this is desired value or desired output and this is actual output. Okay, this is CT of T and this is CSS of T, right? Steady state response. So it will tell how far away the actual output is from the desired value. Means it will indicate the 
steady state error right and it indicates the accuracy of the system if there is steady state error the system is less accurate if the steady state error ess is zero then the system is 100 percent accurate right okay and he can this this is the response of first order system and this is the response of second order system and one more thing i want to tell you here if i take any of the first order system right whose uh, order is one if i look at the denominator of the characteristic equation if the highest power of s is one then the the response of the system for unit step if i apply for the system suppose this is the system right i am applying the input r of t and i am getting the output c of t right i am applying unit step signal unit step signal then let me assume this is first order system for the first order system that first order system may be simple rc circuit right this we have seen r this is right so this is input vi and output v0 and this is r this is c right and what is the transfer function we got v0 by vi v0 by vi is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus src if you remember this is the transfer function we got there 1 divided by 1 plus src just observe the denominator polynomial highest power of s is 1 hence this is the first order system right so it, this first order system is general it may represent some rc circuit or some th some thermal system or so on so on right some thermal system it may be anything right simple rc circuit is a first order system or some thermal system is also a first order system if i apply unit step i am getting this kind of response only as shown in figure a right so always the response is exponential in nature it will rise like this exponential in nature means this response holds good for all kinds of first order system whenever the input is unit step similarly if the system is second order system then if the input is unit step so i am getting the damped oscillations like this means the alternations the oscillations are going to die at time t equal to infinity the response will be same for all kinds of second order system it may represent some system practical system right i hope you understood if any doubts you can unmute yourself at any moment any time and you can speak to me so that i can clarify your doubts immediately don't keep the doubts with you the next steady state error already i have told you ess the difference between the desired output and the actual output of system is steady state error it indicates accuracy if ess is zero steady state is zero then the system is 100% accurate, right? Okay. Fine. Then standard test signals. We'll take up the next topic, standard test signals. Then why we require this standard? I have the system. That may be, I have the system. It may be first order system or second order system. I hope you know what is first order system and second order system by this time, right? I have made you clear. R of T and C of T. Okay, R of T, the input can be anything, no. Why only this uh, standard test signal should be applied? It can be sinusoidal signal, it can be triangular signal, it can be ramp signal, it can be sawtooth. It, the input can be anything of wide range of frequencies and amplitude. But we are studying the standard test signals. Means, let, let this be a first order, second order system. I will apply these four kinds of signals. That is step signal, ramp signal, parabolic signal, impulse signal. And will if i study the system for these kinds of four standard test signals then i can predict the behavior of this first order system and second order system for any kind of input because these four signals step signal ramp signal and parabolic signal impulse signal are representative signals of the other signals that are other signals are the input what we are going to apply that are existing in the nature right so the step signal is a standard signal ramp signal is a standard signal parabolic and impulse signal all these are standard signals and if i take up they represent one or the other kind of the various kinds of signals that are available in the nature what we are going to apply at the input side right so always we check my we check our system for these kinds four kinds of signals step signal ramp signal parabolic uh, impulse signal so if the input what i'm okay let me apply unit step signal as the input for the system if that may be first order or second order right first order second order i am applying the input as unit step and i am getting some response here at the output so we call it as unit step response of first order system unit step response of 
of first order system because I am applying the input as unit step. If it is second order system, unit step response of second order system. Right. Similarly, if I apply the ramp signal, unit ramp signal, then I will say it as unit ramp response of first order system, unit ramp response of second order system. But here for our syllabus, we concentrate only on step signal, unit step signal. We will not study this uh, unit ramp response of the first order system or second order unit ramp response of parabolic signal, unit ramp response of impulse signal of first and second order. We will not study this three. We will study only the unit step response of first order system and unit step response of second order system. Right? Okay. Okay. We will study these uh, standard test signals one by one and we will try to understand their significance and what actual role they play. Right? We will see. That. First is, first kind of standard test signal is step signal. This we call it as, it is somewhat uh, similar to this position function. We will come to understand what is this position function later. Right? So, first we will see what is step signal. Okay. And you can see here, this is the step signal. Right? Okay. This is the time axis and the input is R of t. And the amplitude of the step signal, this is the step signal. Okay, how to define it? You know, the step is a signal whose value changes from one level to another level A in a zero time. At time t equal to zero, the signal changes quickly from one level to another level, from zero to amplitude A, right? The signal quickly changes. So, this is the, let me assume that this is the one kind of input what I am applying for my system, R of t. Here, what is R of t here? Mathematically, the unit step signal, the step signal can be written as A into U of t, right? u of t. What is u of t? Where u of t is 1 for t greater than 0. For t greater than 0 means from here, right? For all values t greater than 0. For t less than 0, the u of t is 0, right? So, if u of t is 1 means, so the amplitude will be 1, right? Right? u of t unit step signal. This we call it as unit step signal. So, unit step function. If I take the Laplace transform of this unit step signal u r of t, then r of s is equal to a by s because u of t is 1 for t greater than 0, so a by constant term. If I take Laplace sum of the constant term, a, a by s. Right? You have to remember the Laplace sum of the unit step signal is a by s. If amplitude is 1, if a is equal to 1, then it is 1 by s. For unit step signal, it is 1 by s. For unit step signal, the Laplace sum form is 1 by s, not a by s, because the amplitude will be 1 right okay then why this why you have to apply this is the system it may be first order or second order system it has input r of t and output c of t and the input what i'm assuming is unit step here yes why we want to apply this unit step and why we should take this unit step as a standard test signal because if i apply the unit step signal we are checking the system for System quickness means the signal is changing from one level to another level at time t equal to zero. Means how fast the system will respond and where how will right how we how will get the output. So this is it is if I apply the unit step signal, we are checking the system quickness, right? And responding to the inputs. And also it is equivalent to the application of several sinusoidal signals of wide range of frequencies. Means if I applying the unit step signal, means I am applying the sinusoidal signal, right? of wide range of frequencies f will vary from 1 hertz to maybe infinite or 1 gigahertz or 100 gigahertz something like that right okay let me apply the science or let me give you the scenario or exp brief explanation let me apply the frequency of sinusoidal let me assume at the input i am giving sinusoidal signal whose frequency is 10k and i will get some output here then i will apply and just I will change the frequency. Next input 20k. Then I will get some other response. Then I will give 30k. I will get some other response. Right? Instead of testing my system for various range of frequencies uh, by our way, by varying the amplitude and by changing, right? So the unit step signal is better. We will take this unit step signal as a standard signal because it represents the sinusoidal signals of wide range of frequencies whether it may be 10k 20k or 100 gigahertz or 1000 gigahertz whatever it is right so it is if i apply unit step signal for the system it is as good as we are applying the sinusoidal signal of wide range of frequencies i hope you it is clear right hence we choose 
unit step signal as the standard test signal for the system whether it may be first order system or second order system right so why we are choosing this uh, uh, unit step signal as the standard test signal because it will we are checking the system quickness as well as we are checking whether the system yes we are checking our system for sinusoidal signals of wide range of frequencies one and the same right okay we'll move to the second uh, ramp signal but for syllabus it is not there at all but we should be knowing it at least there is no derivation but we should be knowing what should be the unit ramp response of the first order system or second order system this we call it as velocity function i will tell you uh, uh, later okay the ramp signal r of t is equal to a t for t greater than 0 a represents the amplitude right and it is equal to 0 for t less than 0 t less than 0 is here right so the signal doesn't exist for t less than 0 for t greater than 0 the signal exists right so it is it depends a into t okay if i take the laplace transform of this r of t i am going to get r of s is equal to a by s square but if i say unit ramp signal unit ramp signal then a is 1 amplitude is 1 if a is 1 means i am getting so the laplace transform of the unit ramp signal is 1 by s square so here you can observe the laplace transform of the unit step signal is 1 by s here the laplace transform of the unit ramp signal is 1 by s square so you can observe here 1 by s 1 by s square next uh, for the next type of standard signal 1 by s cube it comes here so based on this we treat them as position function if i get 1 by s 1 by s square it is a velocity function right next we'll see 1 by s cube it is acceleration function we'll see it fine i hope you understood as the time varies the out the input here it is increasing linearly with respect to time then why we should uh, take this ramp signal as a standard test signal the ramp signal okay why we are choosing is it has the ability to test how the system would respond to a signal that changes linearly with time if the signal is changing here the signal is changing linearly with time then how the system will respond right okay this is made this may be first order system or second order system the same thing whatever i am telling r of t c of t here the input for the system is unit ramp signal unit ramp signal okay i want to test my system whenever the input is changing linearly with time i want to so i will apply the unit ramp signal as the standard test signal if i want to test my system for the linear changes in the input right as the right that is the one thing then one more thing is the ramp signal is an integral of a step signal yes this is the step signal right if i integrate it i will get the ramp signal so i will say that the ramp signal is an integral of a step signal please keep in the mind you should remember this the ramp signal is an integral of the step signal this is the step signal right okay then next we will go to the third kind of test signal parabolic signal this is acceleration function we will say okay how the parabolic uh, signal looks like you can see here this is the x axis is time axis and r of t is the input right so as the time t varies right it increases exponentially right and as compared to the previous one it is increasing linearly and the response is very much quicker here you can see here right okay the mathematical representation of this kind of parabolic signal r of t is equal to a t square by 2 for t greater than 0 the signal exists right for t greater than 0 and the signal does not exist for t less than 0 right that's the meaning of this if i take the laplace transform of this uh, parabolic signal then r of s is equal to a by s cube because we know the laplace transform of t square function right so it is we are getting a i hope you know the laplace transform of t power n is equal to n factorial divided by s to the power of n i hope you are getting so it is t sorry n plus 1 s to the power of n plus 1 right so t square is there so s cube 2 plus 1 s cube i am getting so n factorial means 2 factorial 2 factorial is 2 2 2 get, will get cancelled so i am getting 1 by s cube a is the amplitude i hope you are getting when we, this is the laplace transform of standard test pairs where standard pair of uh, pairs i have given right for you people okay fine but if it is unit parabolic signal one minute okay unit parabolic signal unit parabolic 
signal means a amplitude a will be 1 right so at that time r of s is nothing but 1 by s cube okay since i am getting 1 by s cube this we call it as acceleration function if i get 1 by s it is position function if i get 1 by s square it is velocity function if i get 1 by s cube it is acceleration function right and one more thing you can observe the parabolic signal is an integral of a ramp signal this is the ramp signal if i integrate it i will get the parabolic signal so the parabolic signal is an integral of a ramp signal the next you can observe here from previous things here it is r of t is equal to a into u of t for uh, unit step signal for ramp signal r of t is at and for parabolic signal at square by 2 then i can go on t cube t power 4 and so on but the problem is i will not go more than thus i will stop at parabolic signal and it is of uh, the uh, highest order of t is t square i will not go t cube t power 4 and so on what is the problem i will tell you in reality we will never use a uh, is a test signal faster than the parabolic function right so we will never use the signal which is faster than the parabolic signal you will not go it means faster means it will go like this right you will not you will never use such kind of signals so the parabolic signal itself if i take some system like this it may be atq right so we will not go for such systems because if i take such kind of higher order systems what will happen the integrations the higher order higher order integrations will come into picture in the feedback loop if I, because this is the closed loop system if the higher order integrations will come into picture then it is it will lead to serious stability problems here you will not understand much here please keep in the mind as the higher order integrations come in the feedback loop the stability problems will occur so whatever the signal we are taking the last the is the parabolic signal we will not go uh, beyond the parabolic signal which is faster than the parabolic signal right because it will lead to higher order integrations which will lead to serious stability problems okay so the next kind of standard test signal is impulse signal yes okay yeah then before this we will define what is unit impulse signal the unit impulse is defined as the signal which has zero value everywhere except at time t equals zero where its magnitude is infinite okay this is the time axis at time t equal to zero the signal will be having i'll change the color the amplitude of the signal will be infinite i'll show it like this so the amplitude will be infinite but such such signals are uh, impossible to generate practically right we cannot generate so we'll assume a pulse width right width pulse if i the area under the pulse should be unity the amplitude is a and here from here to here it is t is 1 by a if i multiply the area a into 1 by a it should be 1 we cannot general we know that it is highly impossible to generate the unit impulse signal right so practically we will uh, generate the uh, pulse having some uh, finite pulse width right okay so next it is uh, this unit impulse signal is called as delta function and delta of t mathematically we define delta of t is 0 for t not equal to 0 right for t not equal to 0 means for t equal to 1 2 3 the signal is not existing here it is 0 for t equal to minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 here also the signal is so delta of t is equal to 0 for t not equal to 0 and for t equal to 0 it is 1 if it is unit impulsive right so okay mathematically if i integrate from minus 0 epsilon tends to 0 minus 0 to plus 0 delta of t exists at time t equal to 0 only right mathematically we can write this then if i take the laplace transform of this delta of t for the unit impulse signal the delta of s the laplace transform of the unit impulse function is one unit impulse please you remember that the laplace transform of the unit impulse signal delta of t is one the lap that, that is delta of s is equal to one right then already I told perfect impulse cannot be achieved practically. So it is usually approximated by a pulse of small width, but unit area. If I take the area 1 by a into a, the area under this pulse width will be unity as shown in this figure. Then impulse signal is derivative of a step signal. Yes, this is the step signal, right? If I take the derivation of it, I will be getting the impulse signal, right? Yes. 
then we'll study more about the impulse signal please keep this also in the mind impulse signal is a derivative of a step signal then with respect to impulse signal we'll study more things yes the impulse response of a system with transfer function some okay let me take the system i will show you the diagram here this is g of s the input in laplace domain the input is r of s and output is c of s so what is the transfer function c of s by r of s is equal to g of s right the same thing has been written here c of s by r of s equal to g of s then what is the input here it is impulse signal means delta of s right it is equal to 1 we know the laplace function this is the unit impulse signal if i apply the input as unit impulse i will say that it is unit impulse response of the system right okay the transfer function is c of s by r of s that is equal to g of s is it fine then c of s is equal to take this r of s this side g of s into r of s but what is r of s r of s is equal to what is the input i am applying it is delta of s so what is the laplace transform of that unit sub signal it is 1 so r of s is 1 so multiply with 1 so it is g of s only so c of s is equal to g of s is it fine then take inverse laplace transform c of t is equal to laplace inverse of g of s it is equal to g of t means c of t is equal to g of t we can observe one thing right the response of the system is nothing but its transfer function only the response of the system c of s is nothing but its transfer function if the input is unit impulse right the response of the system c of t is nothing but the forward path uh, transfer function that is g of t if it is in time domain and this is in laplace domain c of t equal to g of t in time domain and c of s equal to g of s in laplace domain i hope you are getting this right thus the impulse response of the system indicated by g of t is nothing but the inverse laplace transform of its transfer function the same thing has been written here inverse laplace transform of its transfer function that is c of t right and this we call it as weighting function of the system okay i'll tell you this you have studied in signals and systems this formula your convolution integral right okay suppose the input may not be always this four kind of unit maybe so we have studied four types of signals here step signal ramp signal parabolic and the fourth is impulse it may be some other that the input can be of any type right so at that time we will make use of unit, unit impulse response of the system right so we will make use of convolution integral as the weighting function the weighting function of system can be used to find the system responses to any kind of input r of t the input can be anything right so by means of convolution integral you have studied this convolution integral which is not of much use here just i will give the formula and leave it c of t the response of the system is equal to uh, integration from 0 to t g of t minus tau into r of tau this r of tau is it may be any kind of input this g of t minus this is delayed impulse delayed impulse the impulse is shifted here right at time t equal to 0 the impulse response i can shift it here at time t equal to 1 right at time t equal to i will shift the impulse response right so this is delayed impulse delayed impulse just go on shifting the impulse and apply the suitable kind of input whatever the input i want to uh, and integrate it from 0 to t with respect to time tau then i will get the response of the system right okay this uh, just for understanding the concept that's all we are not solving any problems or something based on this but we will concentrate out of these four standard signals we will concentrate only on unit step signal we will not concentrate much on ramp parabolic and impulse right okay just for summary uh, unit step signal unit ramp signal unit parabolic unit impulse what is the uh, uh, laplace domain of the input r of t here r of t right so if i take laplace transform it is will represent its r of s for unit step signal i will get 1 by s and this we call it as position function position function and for unit ramp signal i will be getting 1 by s square this we call it as velocity function velocity function and for parabolic signal i will be getting 1 by s cube if i take laplace transform of unit parabolic signal then i will be getting 1 by s cube this we call it as acceleration function right okay then unit impulse the laplace transform of the unit impulse signal is 1 
and I have listed something here the by the side and ramp signal is an integral of the step signal right ramp signal is an integral of step signal and parabolic signal is an integral of ramp signal right integral of ramp signal in the order you remember like this right so impulse signal is a derivative of step signal impulse signal is a derivative it is not an integral derivative please keep in the mind right okay all these things i have summarized in this slide i hope it is clear if any doubts you can unmute yourself and ask till now whatever i have covered so that i can clarify your doubts or else i'll go to the next topic yes uh, it's already 422 if i go to the next topic okay it will take some amount of time okay i'll be covering in the next class i'll stop here only